We're really glad to see you all again and have you with us. I guess we can't see them, but <laughs> in my mind I do. What we wanted to talk about is medications are not the answer. I bought a course from Dr. Furman the other day to see if he had any deeper information that I might share with you and benefit from myself. And sure enough, he gave me some deeper information that we want to share with you. And one of his articles is medications are not the answer. And so many people today either have a heart issue, their cholesterol is too high, or they have high blood pressure. And that's why I went SOS free. No, we both are SOS free is because I wanted to see if I could bring my blood pressure down without meds. I tried the meds for a week or so, and I thought, mm, I don't like the way this makes me feel. There's got to be a better way. Well, I don't think it brought the numbers down either. No, it didn't. It didn't really work, and you felt worse. <laughs> yeah, so what's the point? Yeah. So I wanted to refer to a few things he had to say about heart and cholesterol and statins in particular. And then we'll talk about blood pressure and salt, how it affects the blood pressure. So one thing he says, he likes to say that a prescription pad is a permission slip. You can treat the symptom like cholesterol or high blood pressure with drugs, but that doesn't prevent the degeneration of the blood vessels, your brain and your heart. So what's the point? Yeah, it's like if our numbers come down, if we believe that our health can be measured in numbers, then the medication puts us in the safe zone. We just keep eating the way we have been. And yet, well, when we only look at a number like that and think that's the, 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 the flag that the, what we're, what's we're keep safe. Us, yeah, we're, we're safe, safe. That we're healthy. Um, it doesn't show the whole picture. It's a very narrow view of our health. And so what he's saying, if we're using meds to lower numbers, then that's true. That aspect of our health is helping to be contained. So there's a less likelihood of, of, of heart attack or stroke. But he also points out that when we keep eating the way we were because our numbers are where we're told we're healthy at, and so the blood vessels continue to deteriorate. These abnormalities that were occurring that created the high blood pressure, they're still occurring. But the meds are helping the numbers look good. So yeah. it's kind of a magic, magic trick. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, you know, there's, there's that. And then the other side of it, of course, is that so many meds, almost all meds, have side effects. And some of them are even worse than what they're treating over time. So if we stay on meds for long periods of time, we can actually create more problems for our health and then they're solving. Yeah, I want to read you one last thing he said. You can't take medications without paying a price due to their toxicity. Diuretics and beta blockers are commonly prescribed for blood pressure. They've been shown to increase the risk of developing diabetes. Long-term use of diuretics and calcium channel blockers have been linked to increased incidents of breast cancer. So what is the solution? It's what we're always preaching. It's called high nutrient dense plant whole organic foods. When we make that shift, our health changes, our weight changes, our energy changes, our hopefulness about life often changes. Mm -hmm. It's such a wonderful way to live. Now, I want to read you a little bit about salt because 
for me, with having higher blood pressure, I really never understood the salt connection. Well, what is the salt? Uh, what do you call it? Influence in high blood pressure. And he made it really clear. So I wanted to make that clear to you. He says salt is dangerous, whether you use many varieties of sea salt or just out of a iodized box of salt. Or, Table well, salt yeah. yeah. Uh. Don't add salt to your food, whether or not you have high blood pressure. So what happens is as we get older, what he made clear to me, especially over the age of 65, is salt really affects and moves forward the difficulty of the stiffening of the blood vessels. So it can create a stroke or heart conditions. I didn't realize that. And yeah, and, and what he was saying too is that with the stiffening of the heart of the arteries, um, we um, even, even if the blood pressure isn't elevated, they are still stiffening hardening and that's the foundation for heart attack and stroke so it, it, uh, the disease is there even though the high blood pressure is even though the numbers don't reflect even though the numbers don't reflect yeah it. so what's the story about salt you want to stay away from it for sure and what's amazing is when you uh, let go of it after a couple of weeks, you think, I knew food could taste this way. It's so yummy. So taste buds actually change. That, that's our experience. I know Bonnie first dropped all the salt, so she was cooking everything without salt. And it was a little bland for me. So I would add some after she had cooked it. And uh, that got to be kind of a pain. So I just kind of fell it up to the bar and went, okay, I'm gonna eat it this way. And sure enough, it did take a few weeks. But it's like, I don't notice that it's not there anymore. In fact, if I have uh, food with salt in it, like um, I like Amy's chili, and I had some the other night, and it was like, whoa, this is salty. Yeah, you really uh, notice if there is any salt. It, yeah. So the salt actually deadens our taste buds. Exactly. So when you take it away, you start tasting all these flavors that you weren't tasting. Well, like Connie was saying, this food's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, so salt is really a difficulty if you get older, which everybody does. <laughs> and what you want to do is learn to let go of the salt. Now, my doctor told me when we were dealing with my high blood pressure, don't have more than 1,500 milligrams of salt a day. That's the only thing I knew about its relationship to high blood pressure. But what Furman points out is that you're getting five to 700 milligrams in the food itself. So this is sodium we're talking about because yeah. sodium is kind of the culprit in salt that causes the problem. Yeah, you're getting the needed sodium that you might want. And if you're getting five to 700 milligrams a day, he says never go above a thousand, but really he says, let it go. You don't need it at all. And my experience is he's right again. I'm surprised how wonderful food tastes because initially I thought, how can I let go of salt? I use it in cooking so much. But one last thing he said I wanted to share. Consuming salt is among the most important thing you can do for your health. Consuming less salt. Less salt. Let's try that again. <laughs> Consuming less salt is among the most important thing you can do for your health. A large long-term study of lifestyle intervention published in 2007 showed that a 25 to 35% reduction in dietary sodium over 10 to 15 years resulted in a 25 to 30% lower risk of cardiovascular events and cardiovascular death. So if you want better health, try SOS. You'll be amazed. What is SOS? Salt, oil, sugar, free. Yeah, just don't add it. 
we get plenty of salt, oil, and, and natural sugars in the whole food plant base. Yeah. And the recipe I want to share with you is so simple and so good. It's a cashew cream that you add lemon and apple cider vinegar cashew to cream. cashew cream. Oh, okay. And then you oh, add lemon and apple cider vinegar. And that makes it taste like a sour cream. Mm, sour cream. And it's so good on baked potatoes. <laughs> you will not miss the dairy when you try this. It's amazing. It was our whole dinner last night. Three small baked potatoes and sour cream. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> salad, yeah. It was a salad. It salad. That was yummy. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us below in the comment section because we love to share what we've learned about great health and great eating. It's worth it. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>